And just before we get to the most accurate way to test your HRV, and importantly, how you can actually use it, it's really important to understand three key things, starting with the fact that HRV is highly individual, meaning you should compare yourself to you, not someone else or some metric or standard out there. While it's true that poor sleep and a bad diet can lower HRV, it's also true that genetics play a big role in your HRV range. Check this out. You know, I've got patients who live at 100 and a good day for them, a good day for them, quote unquote, they're at 120 and a bad day for them, they're at, you know, 85. But, you know, if you follow them for five years, their average HRV is going to be 100 milliseconds. I've got other patients whose average HRV is 15 milliseconds and a good day for them is 25 to 30 and a bad day for them is 10. Um, how could that be explained by something other than genes? That's crazy, right? So let's continue. It, they say genetics is somewhere between like 15 and 70 something percent of HRV. Yeah. There's just such a wide range in the research of what you see, mm -hmm. you know, where that exact number falls. I'm not sure, but you definitely see a very strong genetic component to it. Why? I don't think we truly understand that. But as you mentioned, I see people who don't work out at all and they come into the gym or they, you know, whatever, and you look at their numbers and you're like, you have a very high HRV that you would not expect because you clearly don't have a very high level of cardiovascular fitness. But I'll say kind of as a whole, if you start talking to those people, they tend to have a healthier family history. They tend to have better health markers. I think there's something to that and that, that higher HRV probably still correlates to a health benefit, even if it doesn't necessarily come from exercise derived means. It's just a genetic thing that they have that probably confers some benefit. And while lifestyle and training can still shift baseline HRV modestly within your genetic range, Dr. Marco Altini, one of the leading HRV researchers and coach to elite runners, puts it succinctly, I'd like to save you time and money. I most likely cannot increase your HRV, and that's fine. Because it's not just genetics, it's also age. And here's Dr. Atia again. A 50-year-old's HRV is less than half of a 15-year-old's. Um, and it just keeps getting further and further crushed as we go down. <clears throat> I suppose that speaks to what you said earlier, right? Which is one of the hallmarks of aging is this sort of lack of resilience. And we yeah, see exactly. it on every level. Mm -hmm. But this is just uh, a very notable example, which is even at the level of the autonomic nervous system, we lose the ability to recover from insult. And life is an insult. Exactly. Everything exactly. in life is an insult. Uh, in, the world around us is insulting us all the time. It's yeah. just we can respond much better to it as we're younger. And here's why that is. Age reduces your margin of error. That's yeah, what it exactly. comes down to. I mean, I'm 44 and, you know, you can do a lot of things wrong in your 20s and maybe in 30s and you can still get a lot of benefit out of it because you just can, res you're so resilient. Your, your metabolism will adapt. But like you said, the older you get, the, the less you can do that. And so you, you have to be much more acutely aware of what your body can and can't do. And that's part of what HRV can help you understand. I mean, you're just losing, again, this adaptability, this, this ability to turn those two dials as necessary to meet whatever demand you're placing in the body. If we can't turn that sympathetic dial up as much, we don't have that spontaneous energy that you just described to get up and sprint because that's that that was way slower and it probably can't go up as high. Yeah. So it's like we were born with a zero to 10 Reostat or dial on both of them and yep. as you age that 10 goes to a nine eight seven six five and yeah, yeah you can still that. move them but you just can't yeah, move them as uh, 100%, much 100 percent. i would call like autonomic range and, and that really kind of represents what is our body capable of from an energetic standpoint how quickly can we turn that dial up and then conversely how quickly can we turn that dial back down and crank up that parasympathetic side to restore homeostasis and get our bodies back to normal and then there's the impact of everything else and, and to your point i think people vastly underestimate in my experience the impact of their life on their fitness they really do they just don't yes. realize how much a poor night of sleep or two nights of poor sleep right. or few nights too much too much to drink one night or just a poor diet or they really underestimate mental stress mental stress right. is a much bigger deal i would say than people realize so when you look at your hrv just remember that it's impacted by way more than your workout. And then try to control the controllables, like try to get better sleep, to eat better, cut out alcohol, and take a freaking machete to stress, like 
I did that. (laughs) And if you're struggling with those things, at the end of the day, it's also helpful to remember that resting heart rate is a better indicator of your fitness, whereas HRV is an of the moment indicator of how well you're handling your current training and the rest of your life. So don't fixate on one low HRV test. According to Dr. Altini, you should aim for stability as opposed to increasing its value. The goal, in my opinion, should not be to increase HRV, but to use HRV to improve outcomes that do matter, e.g. our health and performance, if that's something that we care about, which is the perfect setup for how to use HRV for performance, starting with that. Let your spirit rise.